morning, good morning, Global Church family. You are welcome this morning. It's a beautiful Friday morning in the Caribbean, and the sun is shining this morning. And it's such a wonderful feeling to be in the house of prayer on today. I welcome you. I welcome all pastors, all ministers, all prophets, all moms and dads, all intercessors, all watchmen, seers in the house. You are welcome this morning to pray with us. We are at the altar of prayer. We are at the place where we command our morning. And this is Apostle Anna Edwards. And it's always a blessing to be in your company. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. This morning, beloved... I'm telling you, I was in prayer on last night for our prayer room this morning and the Spirit of the Lord breathed this portion of scripture upon me. That's all I heard. That's all I saw. This portion of scripture. And I want to read that portion of scripture over our lives this morning. I'm praying this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 i'm praying that portion of scripture over us this morning and this is what it says but as it is written eyes no eyes has seen no air has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that loved him. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I'm going to read it one more time. But as it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. And so this morning, I have come to remind us of the goodness of God in our lives. I have come this morning to remind us of how much God loves us. He loves us beyond we, anything we can imagine. He loves us beyond anything we can e even think about. He loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us with a perfect love. He loves us with a righteous love. Oh, how he loves us. And so this morning I'm praying 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. I just want to remind us of the goodness of God. I want to remind you how special you are. I want to remind you that you are the king's daughter. You are the king's son. I want to remind us this morning of God's perfect love for those that choose him, for those that love him. I want to remind us this morning. And so, mighty God, this morning we come before you in your presence. We come before you this morning. We enter into your throne this morning. We enter into the courtroom of God through the precious blood of Yeshua. We enter in this morning. We come through the blood this morning and we say thank you. We say thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us renewed zeal, giving us grace to pray, giving us grace to go another day to do what you have called us to do. We say thank you. Thank you for your divine protection over our lives while we slept on last night. We are so thankful this morning to be in the house of God, to be at the altar of prayer. We are thankful. Lord, we are thankful for the breath of life in our bodies that you have called us to will, both to will and to do your perfect will in the earth, to fulfill the plan of God concerning our lives. Lord, this morning we are reminded of your perfect love. We are reminded of that which you have revealed to us by the Spirit.
for the Spirit searcheth all things, even the deep things of God. We are reminded this morning of the deep things that you have revealed to us. We are reminded of how much you have anointed us to walk as heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We are reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus. We are heirs and we are joint heirs and we are seated in the heavenly places. We are reminded this morning of all that Yeshua, your son, did for us on the cross. He died on the cross that we may have life. Mighty God, he became poor that we might become rich. Lord, we are reminded of the sacrifices this morning. We open the books of remembrance in our minds and we are reminded of our Father's love for us. This great love, this great love that you have for humanity, we are reminded. What a mighty God we serve this morning to give us all perfect and good gifts. All perfect and good gifts that have come down into our lives in past times have come from above. We are reminded. We are reminded of your miracle working power in our lives. We are reminded of times gone by when we were sick and you healed us. When we were downtrodden and you lifted us up out of the merry clay. When we did not have all the answers to life situations, to circumstances, to the trials of life, to the troubles of life. And you showed up and you showed off in our favor. We are reminded. This morning, mighty God, we take time out to remember your goodness, to remember your saving power. We remember your miracles. We remember when you brought us out of the hardships of life of nothing you took us from the low places and you set us into places with princes and princesses you took us from the mary clay you took us from the fiery trials you took us mighty god through the floods through the fires and you saved us you delivered us and you brought us into our wealthy place we are reminded this morning of the altar that has always been working for us we are reminded of the altar of prayer that have always been working for us we are reminded of the altar of miracles that have always been working for us we are reminded of this great love that God Yahweh has for us we are reminded of your sovereignty we are reminded of your power we are reminded of the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob we are reminded this morning of the miracle working power of God we are reminded of the saving right hand of God over our lives over our ministries over our families over our friends and our prayer partners we are reminded of the saving right hand of god lord this morning we remember we open the books of a memorial and we say thank you we say thank you mighty god for saving us from those traps that the enemy skillfully set up for us. Lord, if you did not save us, we would have stumbled into the traps of life. We would have fallen into the temptations. We would have fallen into the pitfalls. We would have fallen into the snares. Our neck would have been caught by the noose. If it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, where would we be? And so, Lord, we say thank you. 
Oh, we are such a grateful people this morning. We are so grateful to Yahweh. We are so grateful to you, Almighty God. We are so grateful because of your saving grace. We are so grateful because of your saving power. It is by the right hand of the Lord that you have exalted us. It is by the right hand of the Lord that you have exalted our ministries. It is by the right hand of the Lord that you have exalted our horns upon our head. It is by the right hand of the Lord that we have been promoted. It is by the right hand of the Lord. And now, mighty God, you are bringing us into a season where no one has ever seen or heard anything like this before. You are bringing us into a season where no mind has ever even imagined the kind of blessing and quality of life that we are about to live. What God has arranged for those that love them. You are bringing us in. You are bringing us in. You are bringing us into that quality of life. It's a good life. It's a life that no mind has ever even imagined. The things that you have arranged for us. The kind of blessings that you have for those that love you. You're bringing us in to the new level, to an upgraded lifestyle. You are upgrading the lifestyle of the saints because of your great love. You are doing it. You are doing it. For everyone whose faith is able to connect and believe, you are bringing us up. A new level, an upgrade in lifestyle, upgraded furnitures, upgraded studios, upgraded prayer rooms, upgraded ministries, upgraded family life. Everything, 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 everything is being upgraded because of this great love that our Father has for us. Lord, we are thankful. I'm so grateful and thankful for the divine upgrade that has come to us by your spirit. I'm so grateful and thankful this morning for your divine upgrade because you are proving your love as a good, good father. You are removing the old out of our lives and you are bringing in the new. Even in the things that concern us, even in our churches, even in our ministries, even in our family life, even in our personal well-being and welfare, you are bringing divine upgrade. Divine upgrade. Divine upgrade has come. No eyes have seen because they cannot even imagine. They could not imagine what you're getting ready to bless us with. No eyes have seen it. No ear have heard it. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The kind of upgrade, the kind of blessing, the kind of elevation, the kind of promotion that is coming into our life. It's the first Corinthians 2 and 9 blessing hallelujah Ooh, sataka yatata baka satata sataka rabaka sundoro boku sata sataka yata i look in the realms of the spirit and all i can say this morning is thank you Thank you, mighty God, for the divine upgrade. Thank you, mighty God, for the upgrade. There is an upgrade. There is a step up to go up. There is a step up to go up. I see the staircase of heaven being extended into your prayer rooms. Staircase of heaven. The staircases are being extended right there at your altars of prayer. And there is a step up for the setup. There is a step up to go up. There is a setup for the rising. All you got to do is step up. Step on to the staircase it's the staircase of elevation it's the staircase of promotion it's the staircase for divine upgrades some of you the lord have already been showing you the upgrade in your spirit you were already sensing the upgrade you were seeing flashes of the upgrade but you weren't sure what it was but this morning i am here as a prophet of the lord to bring divine confirmation to you it is a divine upgrade it is a set
set up for promotion. It is the staircase of elevation. The Lord says the flashes that I've been showing you concerning the upgrade. It is I, the Lord. We are in the season where tables are turning in your favor. We are in the season where the Lord is rewarding his saints with their rightful portions and their rightful inheritance. So the Lord is saying that the flashes that you saw while you were in your personal time of prayer, it is I, the Lord, thy God. I am the God of abundance. I am the God of divine upgrade. I am the God of surprises. I am the God who wants to bring these good gifts into your life. I am the Lord, thy God, and I am doing it. No eyes has seen, no air have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. That's why you were looking for a confirmation to do it before you could step into it. You were saying, God, if it is you, give me a confirmation. If it is you, send me a word. Well, God says this morning you are receiving the word, a divine upgrade. No eye has seen it, no ears have heard it, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. This is a personal journey between you and God. This is a personal upgrade. This is a personal welfare that God is releasing into your life to take you up, to take you up. You're going up, you're going up, you're going up. Your lifestyle is about to be upgraded. Your family ministry is going up. There are divine staircase. My God, I just saw those divine steps. It has come down from the heavens and the angels are waiting for you. I hear the Lord say the angels are waiting for you. The angels are waiting for you. The season have now opened to divine upgrades. And the Lord is saying the angels are on the staircase waiting for you. Man of God, woman of God, all you have to do is step up by faith. Step up by faith. You yourself may not even understand exactly the magnitude of the upgrade. But God is saying the season have now opened for divine upgrade. Others may not understand it. People may not be able to receive the power of your upgrade. But no, they cannot receive it because their eyes have not seen it. Their ears have not heard it. It has never entered into their hearts. So they will not be able to understand your upgrade. This is a personal thing that the Lord is doing for you, for your ministry, for your walk in God, with God, for your lifestyle, for your marriage. The Lord is saying divine upgrade, divine upgrade. The season have opened because the Lord is distinguishing this righteous. There is a plumb line that is being dropped from the heavens. And this plumb line is causing a distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. And so if you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you have to receive the divine upgrade. You have to step into this new realm. You have to walk in it because God wants to draw a distinguishing line in the earth. And so you have to walk. My sheep hear my voice and they obey it. My sheep know my voice. The Lord says, my sheep know my voice. And so right now, throughout the nations of the world, God is sending a plumb line and he is separating the righteous from the unrighteous. But not only is he doing that spiritually, God is not over spiritualizing everything because God wants you to manifest heaven and earth. So the Lord is bringing you into the season of divine upgrade so that your lifestyle can manifest the glory of God. So that people can look at you and know that you are serving the God of miracles. People are going to be looking at you and they will know that something is different on your life. They will sense something is different. They may not be able to put their finger on what is different or what you have done. But they will know that you have been upgraded. They will know that there, there is a glory that they cannot explain. They will know that there is a light that is shining that cannot be I explained. And so I welcome you this morning into this new realm of upgrade i welcome you i welcome you the windows are open the staircase have been extended to your altars of prayer and the angels are standing on those staircase that's what i see this morning in the realms of the spirit and the lord is saying step onto those divine staircase step up for the go up 
you're getting ready to go up. The season of divine upgrade has been opened over your homes and over your lives. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. What the Lord is getting ready to do for you in this season, this month, it's going to happen quickly and it's going to happen suddenly in this month. The month of August is your month for that divine manifestation of the upgrade. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard what God is getting ready to do. Divine upgrade, receive your divine upgrade, receive. God bless nation why you are walking in this great rich wealth anointing you do not owe anyone an explanation why you are walking in divine abundance they must see the God that you serve they must see the manifestation and know the only explanation they need is that it's the goodness of God upon the children of obedience and so I want you to get ready to walk in that realm. There is a new portal that has opened this morning. Satakarabakasa. My God, so many angels. So many angels. So many angels are moving up and down this prayer room right now. My God, mighty God, mighty God. It's big. It's mega. Your upgrade is mega. Your upgrade is mega. That's right, prophetess. It's the step up for the go up. It's big. Ooh, I'm telling you, some people will not, some people will not be able to, to, to tolerate you in this season. But it's nothing that you have done on your own strength. This is not even by might. This is not by power. This is by the spirit of the living God. This is the upgrade of the Lord. This is the new season of divine upgrade that has opened over your life. And God is just anointing you to, to walk into this new realm. God is anointing you. God is giving you power to walk into this new realm of wealth, this new realm of abundance. Some people may not be able to tolerate the light. They will want you to cover up the light. But let me tell you something. I received that, Pastor Shanti. Thank you. I received my upgrade. Thank you. I definitely receive it. And it's mega. Let me tell you something, saints of God. Whenever your light begins to shine, you cannot cover up the light. The Bible says no man lights a candle and places it under a bushel. When a candle is lighted, it is placed on top of a pedestal. So you have no business covering up the light. If God is lighting your candle, that candle has to go up on a pedestal. Your life is redeemed for signs and wonders. Your light must shine. Your light must shine. Your light must shine. I speak over your life. Your light must shine. No man will put your candle out. No man will put your glory out. Your light must shine. And so, mighty God, right now, I just come into agreement with heaven concerning the time of upgrade, concerning this new season of upgrade. And I speak a divine lifting of your people. I speak the divine lifting. Angels are lifting the saints right now. I speak a divine upgrade. We have stepped into that new realm and we are walking that staircase of promotion. We are climbing the staircase of upgrade. Lord, on this heavenly journey, there is no, there is nothing to hold us back. There is a clear pathway before us. It's a clear pathway. It's a clear pathway. And we are walking up those staircase of promotion right now. Nothing and no one will dim our lights. I pronounce over your life. Nothing and no one will dim your light. Nothing and no one. No devil in hell will dim your light. 
No evil eye will dim your light. No voodoo, no witchcraft, no hex, no spells, no gems. Nothing of the world's economy will dim your light. Your light must shine. I pronounce over your life, your light must shine. Thank you, Prophetess Gloria. Thank you for the prayers. It is definitely a release of the anointing. I sense it. I feel it. It is so strong, woman of God. It's powerful. It's strong. My God, so many angels. Nothing and no one will dim your light. I prophesy over your life. Your light must shine in this season. Your light must shine. The Lord is lighting your candle and the Lord is putting you on top of that pedestal. So your light will shine. So all will see and glorify the Father which is in heaven. All the glory will be given unto him because God wants you to be an advertisement in the earth. I prophesy over your life. Your life will become an advertisement of the glory of God. Your life will be an advertisement of the God that you say you serve. Your light must shine. Your light must shine. I prophesy over your life. Your light will shine. No one has ever seen you shining to this dimension. I just, woo, satakarabakasa. I hear the Lord say, no one has ever seen you shining at this dimension. It's going to blow some people's minds. Ooh, they've never seen it. They've never seen it. They've never seen you shine like this. <laughs> They've never seen you shine on this dimension. <laughs> Some people, I'm telling you, it's going to blow their mind. Because you've never been seen this way before. You're getting ready to capture the attention of the world. My God. I want you to write this declaration. This is what I'm hearing in the spirit. My light will capture the attention of the world. That's the declaration that has come this morning. My light will capture the attention of the world. And we're backing it up with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Satakarabakasa. Thank you, Diane. I received that declaration. I receive it. My light will shine. My light will come of the world. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. No eyes have seen. No ears have heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And I pray that declaration over your life. I decree the declaration of heaven this morning. My light will capture the attention of the world. Ooh, of power. Those are words that have just come down directly from the throne room of heaven. And it's the declaration of the Lord over the righteous. My light will capture the attention of the world. And we back it up. We drive in the stakes with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. And it shall be so. I seal every prayer under the precious blood of Yeshua and I call it done in the mighty name of Adonai. Amen. And Amen.
I just want you to receive. Angels are pouring fresh oils right now. Right where you are, let the angels of the Lord pour fresh oils. Wow, so many angels are here this morning. And they're pouring fresh oils upon your head. Just receive that fresh oil right now. The Holy Spirit is here. And the Holy Spirit is just confirming everything. Every prophetic word is being confirmed right now. Just receive your portion. Your light will capture the attention of the world. Hallelujah. Wow. Let's honor the Holy Spirit with this song right now. We're going to sing to the Holy Spirit because of this powerful anointing that have been released. And right after the morning devotion is going to be coming right up. Let's sing to the Lord.
I believe in God's power. I believe it's unsearchable. I believe that it is so immense we could not even begin to fathom it. I believe in God's promises, that God's promises are made available by God's power. This is why the Bible says, To him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask, think, or imagine. That means that he's able, powerful to do, perform his promise. That the plan and the purpose of God may come to pass in your life. I believe God has a plan for you today. I believe that that plan is far greater than anything you've ever known in the past. I believe that every breath you breathe, you breathe with purpose because his providential plan is coming to pass. Every step you take is something he has ordered. Every mountain you climb is something he's empowered you to climb. And if the God of heaven and earth believes that much in you, then I do too. I believe you're full of potential. I believe that you have the ability to do all things through Christ who gives you strength. I believe you have what it takes. No matter the problem you're facing, God gave you the gift to solve that problem before it ever became known to you. You have the ability to be the person that God has chosen in this generation to change the world. No matter what you've been through in this life, no matter what you didn't hear in your childhood, no matter what you don't hear in your day-to-day -day existence, no matter what people around you think, I want you to know this morning that the God who created the heavens and the earth, who numbers the stars and calls them by name, He loved you enough that He sent His only begotten to die on your behalf. So what shall we say of these things? If He did not spare His own Son, how will He not freely give Give us all things. If God be for you, who can be against you? God has a plan for your tomorrow that's greater than anything you've ever known before. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. God brought you here because he has a purpose for you. He knows you so well he's numbered the hairs on your head. He knows you so well that he's ordered your steps and counted the length of your days. He's placed you here, not by accident, not by chance, not by fortune, but he brought you to this moment in time because he believes in you. Everything that he has done in your life is because he believes in you. Every blessing that you've ever received is because he believed in you. Every battle you've ever fought and won is because he believed in you. Every breath that you've ever breathed is because he believed in you. Romans tells us we know all 
things. Say that with me. All things work together for good. All things. The good, the bad, the difficult, the sad, the hard, the happy, the joyful. Every moment of it all has worked together. What you thought would kill you, God says, I can use that. What you couldn't make sense of, God said, I can use that. When you threw your hands up and said, I quit, God said, I can use that. Why? Not because of you, but because he believes in you. He said, you're more than a conqueror. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. He said, I'll give my angels charge over you that they may take care of you wherever you go. The moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's the moment that the God of heaven looks from earth and he does not call you for what you used to be. He now calls you his son. He calls you his daughter. He calls you his child. He embraces you like a loving father. He wraps his almighty arms around you and he sees you for who you are and what you can be. Others may call you by your past mistakes, but he said old things have passed away and be Behold, all things have become new. Others may look at you and say there's nothing good that's going to come from you. But God looks at you and he says, if you're weak, I'll make you strong. If you're poor, I'll make you rich. If you're broken, I'll make you mended. If you're dead, I'll bring you back to life. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. But if God's going to do something in you, you have got to do something for God. And this is what Jesus said. Have faith in God. Say that with me. Have faith in God. Faith is such a simple word, but it's not easy. And the reason it's not easy is because we've got a God of some time and maybe. No. Our God doesn't change. The reason that faith isn't easy is because we've got to have faith that we believe in God and not in ourselves. Here's what the Bible says about faith. It says that without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith says that you must believe in God's power and His presence in your life. The Bible says that without faith no man shall receive anything. It says a man who doubts shall receive what? nothing. The difference between a dream and a destiny is that a dream is just a wish, but a destiny has faith in it. If you want what you've never had before, you've got to be do, willing to do what you've never done before. And for some of you, that means have faith in God. Put your faith in a God who's never failed. But if we talk about faith, then we must talk about something else, and that's works. Now the Bible says, faith without works is dead. I like to take that word works and use action because that's really what the Bible's talking about. Religion likes to use that word works to say that's how you earn your salvation. That's not how this works. But if you have faith in something, you've got to take action on it. If you have faith that exercise will help you lose weight, you've got to do more than just watch the exercise video. You need to know that the day that Jesus Christ died and went to the place called Calvary and he hung on a cross, not just for you, but he did it for me. When he looked up at the Father with whom he had created heaven and earth and he said, it is finished. He was letting God Almighty know that every one of us were now heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That the price of sin had been paid. That death was defeated.
powerful morning of prayer, intercessions, declarations, promotion, elevation. Powerful, powerful morning in the prayer room. I want to say thank you to everyone that connected in prayer with me this morning. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your, your covering and all of your declarations. God is truly doing something miraculous in the lives of his people. And we're glad to be on the Lord's side. <laughs> this is definitely the time to celebrate in being on the Lord's side. I want you to have a blessed day today. I want you to have a joyful day. I want you to have a bountiful, rich, and rewarding day. Remember to walk in your greatness and let your light shine. Remember to give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The world didn't give it, and the world has no business in taking it away. This is Anna Edwards saying Shabbat Shalom. And remember, it's Friday, so I'm going to be on this evening again at 7 p.m. Right here on the World Harvest Channel. The Lord richly bless you, everyone. Have a joyful day. Share this prayer room and encourage someone this morning.